Hey guys, we got a great one for you this week. We got uh, hobbing and worm gear, making a worm gear. And uh, so sometimes not everything works in your shop. So we took a little trip to another gear shop to uh, get this done. Schedules don't change just because transformers don't show up. So uh, we got on over to uh, micro gear to work on this uh, project. The hob and the gear properties are real important how you set the machine up and that they match your designs and plans. So we're just going to go through setting up this machine. This is a hobbing machine, it's a Micron. And there's a number of little settings on it that you adjust where the hob runs axially and longitudinally, and then how the lead angle is set, where the uh, controls are. It's a neat Swiss machine. They're known to be quite accurate. Most gear shops, you'll see a bunch of these in there. And you see our, if you followed from last week, you see our fixture that we made for these bronze worm gears we cut. To make gears, you need gears. So there's all the change gears on this machine. And so we're finally rolling here. We thought we'd do something interesting for you in terms of uh, how this setup works. So here's the uh, process for touching off to piece of paper is about four thousandths thick so we got eight two sheets here for eight thousand so we just touched off and pushed the paper out of the way and we came down with our uh, depth of cut and sure enough we got uh, two issues here one the hob's not axial aligned and two we failed on the hob uh, totally failed on the touch off that's supposed to be one line and and not a series of three it means something's wrong with your change gears or your machine so we redid it, and there it is, horizontal lines uh, that, that tells you your, your machine set up, and they count out to be our tooth count. So from here on out, we only need to make really small adjustments. So we cut, we inspect, we change, we alter, we cut, we inspect, and then we get right down to the brass tacks on exactly where the machine is set up, so it'll make, it'll make this gear. Now this might seem like a lot of trouble, but this uh, this process doesn't take too long. I think the cut time for each one of these gears was, you know, just a few minutes. So definitely something you'd prefer to make 100 of in your shop or at least 20 or so. There's the first one, looks really good. A little throating on that uh, one inch hob we used. I think that's pretty good looking gear. So here we are doing some, uh, seeing the whole process beginning to end. And that fixture was really handy in terms of aligning things and making it so that every time we made a cut, it was the same cut. A good fixture will make your money because it'll save you trouble throughout your jobs. All your parts will be the same. It's one of those rare California days where it rained. The cutting oil really is, uh, this is such a soft material, it's easy to cut dry, but this uh, takes all the chips away so that it really evacuates the chips. You'll see it here in a sec. And, and this keeps them from getting recut and, and hooked up in the hob and it, it will eventually make for a poor surface finish. You can see those chips just running out of there. The ones that are really small uh, are getting washed away right there. And that's, uh, that's the hob on the bottom doing the work. We made 20 of these gears uh, the other day and the hob looks brand new still. That's got a coating on it. It's a true volute hob, some of the best you can get. It's a class AA. There's the machine after we're done. We did a little cleanup work after that. But there's the product on the pallet for a day's worth of hobby. Thanks for watching, and I hope you stay tuned for the next one.